We're back to Monday. You know what that means. Monolith begins the drip drops of the news feeds. So, on that note, hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo of Xenoblade Chronicles 3 news. That was an needless elongated intro, I apologise. <laughs> Either way, you know what you're here for because apparently you guys just keep watching these videos and we have no idea why. Yeah. But either way, so off, I think it's safe to say that people are looking forward to Xenoblade, and you guys too, hence why, again, you're watching it at this video. But it would appear that we are not the only ones who are looking forward to seeing all of the Xeno goodness. And it's come out recently, as per NintendoEverything.com, we have now got a sort of gauge what the expectations for Xenoblade 3 is. And this is from a Nintendo Everything, and it's from Famitsu, which is one of the most prominent game magazines in Japan, and it says it's most wanted games per this year. What do these games do? <laughs> <laughs> the most wanted, they broke the law of being <laughs> awesome. <laughs> They broke the awesome laws. The game cannot be this awesome, but apparently these games found a way, at least in Japan. <laughs> so, again, Japan's most wanted list is different compared to what we want in either Europe or in America, but it's as follows. And, of course, we have your usual suspects. If I could just scroll down here, not to spoil, even though you've probably seen it. It's seeing how it's Japan, you would think... Of course, it's Final Fantasy. I don't think you can get as big of a JRPG name as you can with Final Fantasy, which is, you know, cool to be expected. However, next one, you'd think, oh, well, it's got to be either Breath of the Wild or something Pokemon related or some kind of Japanese franchise that we have yet to receive over here. <laughs> no, if we scroll down to number two, what do we see here? We have Xenoblade Chronicles 3 as the second most wanted game in Japan. That's pretty cool seeing how Xenoblade has not been around for as long as Final Fantasy. Yeah. And what's even more impressive, it's beating out games like Splatoon, Bayonetta 3, Breath of the Wild 2, Dragon Quest, Monster Hunter, Pokemon, Fire Emblem. I know Famitsu is not like the be-all, end-all of, you know, this is the objective worth of every game. Mm -hmm. But to see how Xenoblade 3 is getting more votes, it's pretty cool. But, that little thing aside, let's get to the main thing on today's video. You can tell I'm kind of happy. Dare I say, I'm riding the waves, man. <laughs> That's all I got. Anyway, let's get here, and this is one thing I'm so happy about. This is again, as per usual, per monolith of Japan, it's as follows. At the breakpoint, Riku will... Gemcraft you by picking it by picking it up during your adventure or using items obtained from enemies. Riku will gemcraft you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he will pick up no one, throw him in the ether furnace. Sacrifice you for the greater good. In the furnace you go. <laughs> Either way, bad translation aside, gem is a powerful equipment that can be attached to each character. It has the effect of increasing your attack power and recovery power, which makes the battle advantageous. So make a lot! <laughs> as, as you would expect, gem crafting from the original Xenoblade is coming back. And for me, I could not be happier because, yes, it could be a little bit complicated for new players when, uh, when getting in, into it in the original game, but once you get a, a hang of it, it's a pretty small but fun experience. We had to look at Chugga Conroy's video, didn't we, in order well, to figure this out? We did. A shout out to that guy, because that guy is pretty goddamn cool. <laughs> but either way, it's in the same model as the original, give or take a little, a little smaller. But either way, it's coming back, and man, I couldn't be happier. Mm -hmm. And once again, we have we have Riku's side of gem crafting, and Manana's side for cooking. Mm -hmm. It's a melting pot of both worlds. <laughs> it's crafting and experience using both mechanics. <laughs> That's a joke on multiple levels, we'll leave it at that. So, again, and the one thing I'm hoping is just like the original, we get to see unique animations and hear unique dialogue between each character because mm -hmm. I loved it and if you haven't played the original and you haven't gem crafted using Ricky oh please do <laughs> it just puts a smile on your face that's all I'll say <laughs> either way 
And we have a second screenshot here. And now this seems to be a more slimmed down, streamlined version of what it is. Because for those of you who don't know from the original game, it, it's not just simply a case of, hey, defense is up, offense is up, agility up. No, you could have a myriad of things. Whatever stats were in the original Xenoblade, you could increase it tenfold. Do you want to be less noticeable on the ground? Want, or want to be less noticeable in the water? Do you want to be less noticeable from um, enemies in the sky? Mm -hmm. You could. And even things that were pretty much outright needed to face super bosses. Yeah, in that description in the right, it translates to like enemy drops. So it works like the O cores in two because you have like an Igna thing and you have like, you have all kinds of drops from enemies in, in that. Mm hmm. So, and of course, from what the description showed, there is going to be gems throughout the world in which we we can get from, mm -hmm. as, as in the cars, as well as monster drops. So, again, I this is my comfort zone. <laughs> I just love it. Now, I can understand people may be a little bit hesitant and be like, oh, well, it is like a random chance, mm -hmm. you know, of how good you can get a certain gem, so to speak. But hey, that's just me. Another question I have is, just like the original, will each equipment have multiple slots? Mm -hmm. Because weapons can either have one, two, three. Attires can either have one or two, depending on which one they were. Mm -hmm. But either way, I'm just so happy to just see this game back. I love it. So, guys, what are your thoughts about gem crafting coming back? would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. And finally, another one that's again is, is per monolith of uh, Japan, we actually get another town art, this time focusing more on Mio, and it's as follows. The town art of Mio's class, Gale, is Gemini Strike. It is also a powerful technique to collect the enemy's aim while avoiding the enemy's attack. If you use a technique, you can attract the attention of the enemy at once and protect your friends. I'll use this power to protect my friends. <laughs> as always, with this JRPG jargon and, and, and whatnot. Now, forgive me if I'm wrong, is Gemini Strike an existing art in Xenoblade lore? It's Gemini Loop. Yeah, yeah, Gemini Loop. And Gemini that's, Loop. And that's near, isn't it? Yep. So, again, this could possibly be a translation error. No, if... it is Gemini Strike in, in Xenoblade 3. Okay. <laughs> again. I had to look it up. I had trouble finding it, but I found a screenshot like, yeah, it this this translation's correct for once. It is Gemini Strike. I just always, I just always want to hold my hands up and say, hey, hey, I'm just going on what I see, see here. <laughs> so, as you can expect, Mio, again, it bugs the hell out of me, but hey, she is a tank. I'm not going to argue with that. <laughs> so, I guess I'll roll with the punches just like a tank will. Mm -hmm. And not only do we have a nice little description, we also have a little clip here. So let, let's play it once, see it, and then go through it a second time and see what we can see. So... So, similar to how we've seen with Noah's Town Arts, it is just about taking the aggro from the enemies. Now, again, pretty standard for, uh, for Xenoblade, and it is nice to see Mia u using her rings in action. No. Yeah, I like the animation of the talent art. Yeah. Yeah, I got with the spinning rings. It's, it's so cool. Yeah. But we can't really tell how she's building it up, the talent art. That is actually a good question. Let's see. Let's have a, let's have a go back. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so not full here. It might be either from dazing the enemy or getting a critical hit. It might be. I mean, to be fair, I don't think, because I think she just used an auto attack right there. So, she didn't use any specific art. Yeah, it had to be from someone else, unless you, unless a critical hit can, call, uh, can cause days in of itself. I don't think so, unless she has a gem equipped for that. I mean, it would be a nice transition to the news we got. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know, but that's all speculative at this point. Either way, we're learning more and more about Aberdeen's character, and it's a minor thing, but I just really like Mio's clothing animation with how she's running around and whatnot. Yeah. It's attention to detail that a lot of people don't really know or feel. As a person who's done um, animating in the past, trust me, animating clothes, it's kind of a pain in the ass. Especially if it's free-flowing like this. <laughs> well, I digress. Either way, guys, what's your thoughts and feelings on the news that Monolith has dropped for us today? Love to hear your thoughts in the comments, and as always, if you want to stay up to date with whatever Xen Xenoblade news we get, whether it's from Monolith or somewhere else, trailers, screenshots, whatever the case, we'll be here to cover it. And as always, I've been Lightning. I'm Alice. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to start cooking using some gems. <laughs> And then screaming, yay! <laughs> we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.